My name is Ines Sun, like the sun. And I live and work in Brooklyn, but I was born and raised in Taiwan, in Taipei. Primarily, I'm a painter. Painting is where my heartbeat is. So I use oil most of the time, but with outdoor painting, I have to rely largely on watercolor. And since you have to climb paint, so you cannot carry too many things. So I have a little sketchbook with the watercolor. So I do a lot of watercolor. You know, I have one painting teacher. So he is actually from San Diego. He was the person who taught me at school how to sketch outdoor and how to look at Chinese painting. So he always said the Chinese paints the mountain. They don't just go to the mountain and sit down and start to paint mountain. They, they go there, they live 10 years, and then start to do mountains, start to paint mountains. So I think the idea is I have three weeks. So the first week I, I went out a lot. I carry stuff, I climb up, but sometimes I go to the summit, I get too tired, I couldn't paint. <laughs> so first week is really more of observation and, and kind of absorb in like a sponge. And the second week you have a lot of information Every day I still paint, and then um, and you, you, you have you almost like in a cloud, like this now, in the cloud. And then by the third week, and then you start to be more clear. Your, your brush starts to be more confident, and then you start to get the tone, tonality of the mountain. It starts to kind of in you, so then you kind of have to imagine not you are visiting the mountain, that you kind of breathe with the mountain, with your body, and then, 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 then you kind of just naturally come out where the mountain is. And three weeks still very short. If I really wanted to do a complete project, I think you need to come back to visit, you know, constantly to really getting more and more information. I use Chinese calligraphy as part of my daily practice before I paint, so I do have it's much lighter to carry the brush and the ink as opposed to the watercolor. So I did a lot of kind of a Chinese way of how did you sketch the mountain. You know, I was trained as an office person, like executive, so hopefully I will be a CEO of the company. That's how I was trained in mean, advertising. I did work at the Ogilvy in Taiwan for one year, and then I came to New York City to uh, study for my master's degree. So painting never happened. I think New York City actually educated me. I just continue going to see things, shows, Broadway shows, opera. I still don't like it. <laughs> and Metropolitan. I went to Metropolitan Museum. I look at the Van Gogh. It was the dying, very big um, sunflowers, but it's a very small painting. And I look at it and I said, you know, there's all kinds of sad stories about Van Gogh, but when I saw that sunflower, I saw life, it's so, it like really wanted to live, like filled with the energy and positivity. I see life and I said, oh, this is a fine art, this is art. I think that's the moment I actually understood what art was. And, and then someone gave me brushes and paper. So they said, if you're ever interested to use this, you can go to Arson Lake of New York, which I went, and that's how I started. I love mountain. I, 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 I always say there are two kinds, either you're ocean person or you're mountain person. But I bump into people hiking out the mountain, the lady says, no, 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 I like both equally. So <laughs> I really love mountain. And I even gave my husband a Chinese name called Like Mountain. <laughs> and he's very tall. So mountain, when you're getting higher, the, the altitude, the elevation, you might, you lift yourself up where you can see the view and you might become more clear and you have better air, everything become better. And you kind of shrug off a lot of things that you don't have to bring to the mountain. It naturally just kind of falls apart, falls away. And then, then you kind of more close to your own nature because everything just so perfectly placed everywhere. Today you don't see, but normally there are like 10 butterflies right, right here. And um, if you just look into any little birds, there's so many hummingbirds too, they kind of fly into your face. <laughs> so this is an experience I won't normally have it. And I'm just um, so happy to see all the birds. I have never seen it before. Then I can prove on my, uh, le uh, what's it called, left list, like the first time. <laughs> so mountain just excites me. 
I think artists have to learn to be, not has to be, I mean, in nature, they tend to be wanted to be alone so they can create and work. Because when you do things very simply, the things more in, in, in tune with your nature start to arise naturally. And then you cannot do that in, you can do that in, 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 your, in your studio, continuously working. You can kind of wheel it and to have that uninterrupted time. But here is very natural. It's a good living experience. Yeah. I always see art as a service. I think Martise said, I like my painting like an armchair. So like um, working class, white color, they come home, they can sit on that most comfortable armchair. And that's exactly how I feel. So painting, you communicate with the one person who owns it. So that's why later I developed this uh, silent retreat, 15 minutes called Heaven Earth Tea Hut and we've been drinking tea together. What I want people to do is come into this artfully designed uh, hut, either with silk or with uh, fiber paper, and then you come in and in 15 minutes, it's a rhythmic movement with the tea and calligraphy in silence. And then, because not everybody has a, a opportunity to be in silence in the nature. So that things can transport you to people like a mountaintop on the summit. I've been to the Sony man many times and there are times people just, there's like good amount 10 people, there are couples, but they would just sit there and look out and completely silent. I think that's what we, most of people live in the city needs. <laughs> yeah. Calligraphy, the Chinese calligraphy, really something to do with your breathing. And you really not breathe through your nose, it's you breathe through your body, your core. So. It is a very short program. It's only lasts for maybe 45 minutes. And then um, it's almost ask them to kind of breathe with their hands and through their brush and writing something actually very simple like drawings. And then you can see the children, they can very quickly get into it because they, are, they don't have, they don't bring a lot of ego with them. They don't know what it is, but a doll is more intimidated by it. And then, and they see it as something from the foreign culture, but it's actually, it's like a drawings. And then it's known for its longevity, the health effect. So I wish we can do more in the future. And I can see how the kids, like five years old, when they ride mountains, you know, it's very, it's very immediate. It's very intuitive. And I like to draw that out from adults. And I think that's very in tune with the, with the uh, installation I do. I think we all kind of had a lot of layers, like uh, onions. So we, we like to peel that skin off each time. And, and so when you do everything, and you can be very comfortable and at ease. So that really is the purpose of the program. I'm very grateful. This is no worse to describe because I think I found them extremely generous because they could have just given one week, but three weeks really is the proper time for you to really know about the mountain and familiar myself with it. And then, and then very beautiful room, very, I, I get a heater working now <laughs> and very comfortable, quiet. I sleep very well here. So I really thank the trustee of Shenandoah and all the rangers that helped me.